Welcome back to Bravo Breaking News with Kim and Lisa. We're back to talk Real Housewives of Orange County, and things are getting quite spicy between the ladies, wouldn't you say, Lisa? Oh my God, yes. So Katie is daring to go up against Fancy Pants to Bro, and everyone else is basically just sitting back and like wishing her luck. So what do we think? Did Heather really call the paps, or is Katie just kind of vying for a storyline? I have a lot of thoughts to get into, and I'm really excited. Things are getting messy. We're going to break it all down, but before we do, of course, you guys know what to do. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any more recaps or Bravo breaking news to come. All right, so we jump in with Harry. I always do this. With Heather and Terry in their penthouse. That's their, their couple's of- name, Harry. <laughs> Harry. The Harry, Harry Duro. Um they're one of three properties in, you know, the greater Los Angeles area. And they're kind of talking about how Terry's stroke put things into perspective for them, but not before Heather obnoxiously points out that, oh, is that our house, honey? Or is that Drake's house? I get them I get them mixed up all the time. No, Drake's is the one next to ours. Oh, okay. I'm just like, oh my God, you're going to hear obnoxious. So obnoxious. I have so many questions. First of all, we know that Heather bought a penthouse on Selling Sunset like yeah. last season or the season before. This is not it. This is not that penthouse. This is a different penthouse. So where is the other like $20 million penthouse that they bought in LA? Um, That's my first question. Second question slash statement. That house that they were pointing to on the hill is in no way their house that they are remodeling. If you zoom in, which I did, the sleuth that I am, it is like this expansive white property that does not look like the house that they are remodeling whatsoever. I think they were, you know, they were just joking and pointing to the hills, but that is not their house. I bet you can see Drake's house, but the fact that they are even comparing their house to Drake's house is ridiculous, and it makes me think, what is going on here? How did are they, how do the Dubros have so much money? Are they showing a different house than what they actually have? Like you know how, like sometimes on reality shows they don't they show an exterior of a house, but it's not actually that house for privacy reasons. Like, is that what they're doing? Because yeah, are they? How many houses are we now owning? I don't know, but it's still bothering me the fact that she lives in Los Angeles. She no longer lives in Orange County. Therefore, I don't think she should be on Real Housewives of Orange County. It just, it doesn't make sense. We have these cities for a reason. If there is a housewife show in the city that you're living in, you should be on that. I don't know if you caught Watch What Happens Live, but, you know, of course, that was kind of like the number one question for her. Right. Um, And she was basically like, well, that's kind of in your hands, Andy. So, yeah, I don't know. I think that it may happen in the future. What do you think? I can definitely see it happening. And I think she fit in well with those ladies. But I have said before, and I still stand by it. I think Heather enjoys being the big fish in a small pond and everyone kind of looks up to her on OC where as if she moves into the Beverly Hills cast she's on even playing field with most of the other ladies and so I don't know I think she just kind of thrives in a place where she knows she's up here but we'll see what happens no you're right that makes a lot of sense um Okay, so we get this scene where some of the ladies, not all of them, I think Shannon and Heather um, are, you know, not included in this, but we're taking a sprinter to a dive bar, which is a very interesting choice. Whether that was necessary, I'm not sure, but the ladies go, they pick up Katie, and, you know, Emily has to go pee like we all do at some points, but instead of going into the house to use the restroom, she decides to pop a squat in Katie's front yard. And I want to get your thoughts on this because I would expect that to happen maybe at the end of the end night, of night, not at the beginning of the night on the way. But she does explain, she, she's like, you know, I wanted to streamline the process. I didn't want to have to go in and talk to her family and meet her husband and da 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 I wanted to go ahead and get to the location. 
which I kind of relate to. But what do you think? No, I thought the same thing. Once she said that, I was like, oh, okay, I kind of get that. But also, yeah, like was she pre-gaming? Because that definitely feels like a um, late night decision that one would make and not a beginning of the night decision. I mean, what's the big deal? Just walk in and be like, hi, oh, nice to meet you. Is it okay if I just use your restroom real quick? Okay, and then we'll be out of your hair. I mean, but Emily, I think she leans into the comedy of it all. And I think she knew it was just going to make for a funny moment. I agree. I agree. I hope it's not like, you know, we don't get that, you know, her trying too hard. Um, Yeah. I still think it's funny, but it could stray in that direction. Um, But the ladies get to the bar. They all choose to order espresso martinis at this dive (laughs) bar, which I couldn't get over. They were like the lightest color, the milkiest like worst type of espresso martini like ladies this is not the time nor the place to order an espresso martini what were they thinking yeah i don't know like order a beer preferably not on draft because i don't know sometimes they don't clean those things out but it was a very funny choice and i think they stood out like a sore thumb um amongst the rest of the patrons who i'm sure were lovely and immediately emily is trying to rally the girls and the bartenders to let them dance on the bar. And so she really wanted to have her coyote ugly moment. And, um, you know, she was like, look, I'm out. I'm dressed. We're doing this. I love it. And I support it. Um, I mean, women of all ages should be able to get up and dance on the bar. I loved it. It was fun. It was a little forced, you know, it's like basically like a Tuesday night at 7 p.m. in yeah. Orange County. Like, I think that more belongs at like on delays, you know, versus where they were. But hey, you know, you got you have to savor the moment, live in the moment um, and all of that. But of course, the storyline of this week's episode gets started at this dive bar and Katie brings up the whole Heather Dubrow paparazzi situation. And I've got a lot of thoughts. Okay, me too. Because Katie didn't bring it up. Emily was super messy in this moment. And she goes, oh, so Tamara. So I was at lunch with Katie the other day. And she brought up the, the Heather paparazzi thing. Katie, tell her what you said. And it was like, okay, Emily is clearly just going for it here. Um, and she doesn't care that she looks messy. She's just going to get things started. Yeah, I mean, she's kind of definitely taking the role of pot stirrer. Tamara also took that role later on in the episode. Um, but, you know, Katie's basically like, my friend who is in charge of all paparazzi confirmed that Heather Dubrow's Disneyland photos were staged and she hired a paparazzi. She also tells them about the tagged birthday photo and I guess Katie and Heather actually went to lunch and kind of like talked about this or they got their nails done together or something like that there was a flashback and I don't know why we didn't see more of that but Heather you know basically is like oh I tagged you oh my gosh that's so weird like I actually don't handle my social media it was my social media manager so classic housewives blaming the social media manager but like they're Katie, I don't think anybody else really gives a shit, but Katie's like, you know, if you're caught, just own up to it. I'm like, caught doing what? Tagging you in a photo? What does that even, what does that even mean? That's like absolutely nothing. And it's stupid. So I don't know. I feel like Katie's bringing this up. And the other women like kind of aren't like really latching on to it. What did you think? Yeah. And Gina's in fact telling her, I told you not to tell people because Gina knows this fight that she's about to get into with Heather is not going to be worth it. And it's not going to go well for Katie. So I think, yeah, I agree with you. The whole tagging thing is just weird. And it was probably just a dumb mistake. But Katie's really latching on to this. And I love the my friend who's in charge of all the paparazzi. Okay, it's not like there's a Los Angeles paparazzi LLC, all right? And there's a department head that says, okay, you know, gives assignments. All right, you go on location here. You head over to uh, uh, Erewhon and see who you can get. You head over to um, Craig's and see who you can snap. It doesn't work that way. They're all just independent photographers and then they sell them to publications. So 
listen, I'm sure she does have a friend who maybe has some connections in the paparazzi world, but it's just so funny the way she's presenting it. I agree. I agree. Um, And I have a very, very viable theory that I'm going to save till the end. So you guys better keep watching. Um, But I I know exactly what's going on here. It's not like a secret to me in any way. Um, We'll get to that at the end. But so we get to this uh, other scene with, you guys know, my favorite, the OG of the OC is back. Vicki Gumbelson makes her entrance um, into Shannon's house, sharing immediately that she has a staph infection. And I just love like the moment she walks in the door, it's like this chaotic energy like it's just like this frenetic energy and I I love it I feed off of it she's just like oh I have a stab infection and I was in the hospital but I you know was I checked myself out because I was too busy and I couldn't stay in the hospital and it's just I don't know she's just so naturally funny I I love her so much I don't know why she's just in a friend role I think she deserves so much more than that um, but of course, her and Shannon are getting together to talk about the demise of the Trace Amigas. They are now the Dos Amigas, and they're going to move forward with the show, just them two. So what what do you think of all this? Well, I really want to understand like what the real reason behind Tamara, Tamara's departure is, because she's claiming that she doesn't feel like it's in good taste for Shannon to be doing a show about drinking after her DUI. Okay, but then why wouldn't she talk to Vicky about it? Like, Tamara just completely cut both of them out of her life. And it just doesn't make sense to me. Like, the explanation that she's giving to us isn't tracking. So I really want to know what the real reason is, because I don't think she's shared it yet. Um, two, and, and also, like, do we really think Tamara's just going to walk away from a paycheck like that? Like, I just, it's not... The math is not mathing. Um, and then, yeah, so they say that they're going to continue on. I don't know that the show has as much cachet without it being Trace Amigas, but, um, you know, they want to soldier on. And Archie is kind of given the side eye, like, Mom, are you sure it's a good idea? Mom. Yeah, I, I don't know about that. I definitely don't think it has the same pull. Um I don't know. I did go to the one of two, I think, Trace Amiga shows. Um, it was kind of crazy, pretty laughable. I feel like I need to do like a montage of the best moments because now the, now's the time to kind of revisit that. Um, but it was interesting. We also learn again that John Jansen is suing Shannon for more money. And she kind of like explains it. Like he is basically just doing it to get back at her. And like he actually like may need the money because he doesn't work. I didn't know this. D- did you? No, but I'm just pissed that once again, this man is taking up space in my brain and he's taking up like air by us talking about him. Like I am so sick of talking about John Jansen and I hate that he's been a storyline on this show for the past whatever four seasons like enough he is such a turd of a human being i think vicky agrees you know we get the <laughs> like the classic vicky gagging moment um and i have to say gotta agree i think let's i mean i don't think we're gonna be moving on from john jansen but at least we got a little bit less of him this episode um, yeah, and you know who else I didn't miss this episode? Alexis Bellino. I'm sorry oh, to say yeah. it. I know people are loving her, but I I wasn't sad that she wasn't on this episode. I didn't miss her. I think small doses of Alexis may be best. Um, we'll see what she brings moving forward. Um, but we also didn't get much of Jen, who was kind of like the main storyline last episode. But this episode, we do kind of see her and Ryan They are all moved in together. They are planning a trip to Las Vegas. And she's basically like, should I post about it? Should I not? Because these ladies are definitely going to be coming for me. Of course, she posts about it. Of course, the ladies come for her. Gina and Emily film this scene where they're like, did you see Jen's in Las Vegas? And what do you think? Do you think that she needs to be like hiding these trips and and not 
spending the money, but it's yes. not her money. But it doesn't Ron matter. For it. it doesn't matter. What matters is optics. Okay. She needs to understand that first of all, you don't need to post everything in your life. Okay. Like life still goes on, even if you don't share it with everyone on social media. And second of all, it gives the illusion that she is not interested in staying home and like trying to figure out how she can make income and how she can pay back these people who she owes and how she can establish a career for herself so that she doesn't have to rely on other people or maybe take some like finance, like basic finance courses so that she can understand how do, how do I get a credit card? No, I'm not even being shady. Like, how do I get a credit card? How does that work? How do I get things in my name? She's not putting in any of that work. And like, I'm not saying she has to be, you know, sit, sitting at home 24 seven doing this stuff, but it's like, well, if you're going to take a trip, just don't post about it. I, I don't think she wants to do any of that stuff. I think she found a rich boyfriend who can like maintain the lifestyle that she's been living. And, you know, even though she, he, I guess he's kind of taken on some of her debt. She, he's helping to pay for stuff. I think she's just kind of like easing her way into this new that's life right. where she really doesn't have to change much. So that's right. I don't really think that she's willing to put in the work or hustle or do anything that Gina says. And, and I'm that's what's sure. rubbing the ladies the wrong way because she's going to make the same mistake again. And five years, six years, seven years down the line, when her and Ryan break up, she's going to be in the same position, except she'll be in her 50s. You think it's going to be that long? You think they're going to last that long? I don't know. I don't know. I was being generous. <laughs> yeah, it'll be interesting. I don't know. I kind of feel for Jen a little bit. Um, I, I don't know. I just have this soft, soft heart for her a little bit in this moment. And I do kind of like the way Ryan is supporting her. But we'll see. I feel like that might change throughout the season. Now, let me ask you something. Do we think that Ryan is maybe a sex addict? Because literally oh. in every scene that they're in, he talks about having sex with her or like makes comments, you know, oh, that dress would look even better next to the bed. Oh, I can't wait for, you know, that bikini to come off. Like it is always sexual. And like, I don't think he's joking. So I just I'm getting that vibe. It could be. It could be. I don't know. Maybe Jen is a freak in the sheets, too. I I don't know. I guess time will tell. I did not really catch that. But hey, you never know. I don't know. This guy is definitely weird. Um, I mean, there are a lot of things about him that rub me the wrong way. I just do like how he's supporting Jen in this difficult time in her life. But other than that, totally. he does seem kind of sleazy. So like there's just I, something off. It's like, I want to believe that you're a super nice guy and that you're doing all this out of the goodness of your heart. But I also, there's something I don't trust. Oh, 100%. 100%. Okay. So we kind of, everything kind of culminates at this golf event that Katie's planning. And I'm confused here because I think Katie's husband is a golf commentator, right? And she's like a sports journalist. Is that something like that? Is? Correct. Okay. But she says golf is their passion. She's always surrounded by golf. And then we see her golfing and she like can't golf at all. Like I was just really, I was kind of confused. And I, like, did I misunderstand what's happening? But anyway, so she, you know, hosts this event. It's a cute event. They all look like super cute. I loved the their little take on golf chic. Um, Heather, of course, brings this giant bottle of, dom to you know give to the host and um everyone's just kind of saying like i don't really golf but like i like the drinks or i'm here for the outfits or you know flirting with the golf pros and everything they have a hot dog bar um i think that was kind of her way to butter up to butter up heather a little bit and there is this like housewives trope of them loving hot dogs like We've heard Lisa Renna and Erica talk about it. We've heard, um, who else was it? Was it Sonia or something? Like, I feel like there's multiple scenes where housewives of different franchises are going on about how they love a hot dog. Um, so this is just, you know, one to add to that pile. But, you know, we kind of get into the competition 
And then um, things start to get interesting because after they're done, Emily wins her product glasses. The conversation starts around, is Katie going to talk to Heather and tell her about this paparazzi situation? Is she going to confront Heather? Because now everyone in the group knows about this except Heather. So what did you think? Was this the right time for Katie to approach Heather? Um, And how do you think it all went down? Well, of course, it starts off because Tamara, you know, decides to stir the pot. So she's the one that actually goes up to Heather and is like, um, yeah, so I just wanted to let you know that Katie says that you call the paparazzi like all the time on yourself. And it's like, first of all, that's not what not what Katie said. said. Um, and then, you know, they kind of start talking about it before uh, Katie and Heather get into it. And I think that Katie in a confessional or something, she says, I, I really didn't know this was like an issue last year, like the whole paparazzi thing. And I'm like, girl. Are you for real? Do you think that we're stupid? You didn't know that this was a storyline last year on the show because that's exactly why you're bringing it up again. You're digging up old dirt on Heather because you have nothing else to bring to the table. And she is basically like ready to combat Heather about it. And um, she's like, I'm I'm just going to go talk to her. And everybody's like, well, good fucking good luck. luck. <laughs> good luck going up against Heather Dubrow. And this... I'm sorry, this bitch has some nerve because I said that I kind of liked Katie in these past few episodes. This episode completely turned me off of her. And it like I I'm pretty much done with her after her conversation with Heather. Really? Okay. What did she say that that irked you so much? Well, first of all, she keeps saying, I have proof. I have proof. Proof. I, you know, I messaged the manager of paparazzi's in Los Angeles and Mr. Paparazzi, said, Mr. Paparazzi himself. And he said, yes, Heather calls the paparazzi. And, you know, of course, they show the screenshot. I'm sorry, that is not proof of anything. However, however, I, I do think that Katie is vying for a storyline. She's coming up against Heather Dubrow. She has nothing better to work with on the show. I think this is try hard. I think it's thirsty. I think it's exactly what I don't like new housewives doing. But yeah. two things can be true at the same time. Because do I think that someone in Heather Dubrow's camp called the paparazzi and staged those photos? One thousand percent yes yes so two things can be true at the same time what do you think i am glad that you brought that up because i had the same thought heather is very careful to say i have never called the paparazzi i swear on my children's lives and i think she can make that declaration and sleep well at night because she herself probably has never called the paparazzi she has an assistant do it or a house manager or her social media manager or whoever it is. Someone set up that photo shoot, I'm going to call it. And so I think it's sort of her saying like on a technicality, I didn't lie because I didn't do it. And Katie's really going hard though because she keeps saying, I, you lied, you lied. And Heather is getting really pissed about that. Which, you know, anyone would. Um, But I do have to say that I kind of appreciate Katie for having the balls to go up against Heather because all the other women are like, good fucking luck. You know, it's like going up against Teresa or Erica Jane. Like there are certain housewives that are just very intimidating. And I think Heather's one of them because she has resources, she has money, and she... Like, let's not forget the way she spoke to Shannon last season or two seasons ago when she kind of like basically threatened her. And she was like, if you ever speak about my family again, what did she say? It's like, I'm coming for you. But it was like, it was chilling. And so Katie, I mean, I agree. I don't want a housewife who's just too thirsty and trying to make up a storyline. But there is a part of me that's enjoying this entertainment. 
it's just over something so stupid. And I, I look, I consider myself like a pop culture celebrity historian. I, I read every article. I, you know, I, I know what's going on and I know a little bit about the inner workings of Hollywood. And what I do know is that there are not paparazzi hanging out at Disneyland. There are not not paparazzi hanging outside of a random gym in LA, a la Jack Taylor. Taylor. There are not paparazzi hanging out at these random places. There are a few places in LA where you can find them. Craig's, which Tamara called out, is one of them. These Maybe paparazzi the are exactly these paparazzi are not at these places unless they are called. So it's kind of a given that if you see paparazzi photos of most celebrities, it's because they were called or someone spotted them and they, it was planned for them to be there. So the fact that Katie thinks that bringing this up is this major secret that's exposed and it's going to, you know, out Heather and all of this is just so stupid and shows me that she doesn't know anything about, I don't know, the entertainment industry as a whole. She thinks that this is a storyline. I think it's just going to piss Heather off. I think it's going to, like Heather said, Be like, you know, you're the newbie in the group. You should come in and like try to make friends and not instantly alienate people. And I think that's what she's trying to do. And I don't know. I'm sorry. It's it's it. It pissed me off. It pissed me off. Yeah, no, I hear you. I totally hear you. So where do we go from here? You know, we're going to see more of the Tamara and Shannon of it all. And I hope we get some more Vicky But we're just getting started on OC, and so far, I'm into it. You know, I think the last couple seasons, I've sort of been in and out, like, whether I'm I'm feeling it or not. But so far, like, I'm feeling this this season. I agree. I agree. I'm into it. Uh, You guys can tell I'm getting heated. I'm (laughs) invested. We'll see if Katie redeems herself. I don't know. I just hope she doesn't latch on to this paparazzi storyline like the esophagus because it will not end well for her she needs to kind of expand her horizons and create other storylines for herself so I really hope that that happens I will still give her another shot but yeah we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see what happens with Alexis and John and Shannon and um the Dos Amigas uh so Yeah, make sure you guys subscribe to tune in to all of our upcoming recaps and more Bravo Breaking News to come. And follow Bravo Breaking News on Instagram. You can find me at Lisa Not Rena on Instagram. We'll see you guys next time. Bye.